Theater presents Desi Arnaz and Una Merkel. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Summer Replacement, starring Una Merkel. And now, here is your host, Desi Arnaz. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Summer Replacement, starring Una Merkel as Alice. And now, back to the solution of tonight's story on Defender of Justice. Defender. Yes, Miss Myers. You're wanted on the phone. It's the governor. And I'll take it in here. But, Chief. Yes, Regan. How did you know McKenna was the killer and not old Loopy Louie, who all the time was really an FBI agent on a trail of an international narcotics ring? Yes, Chief. How did you know that? Miss Myers, I'm surprised at you. Now you're talking in riddles, Chief. Whoever would have suspected that McKenna, the wealthy scion of a Philadelphia family... And a blue blood to bloot. I mean, boot. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> you're a card, Regan, isn't he, Chief? Yes, Miss Myers. Ha uh -huh. And you just said it, Miss Myers. That was it. His card. Whose card? What card? McKenna's card. His calling card. He left it at the scene of the crime. You're talking in riddles, Chief. And do you see this? McKenna's calling card. The one he left here at the office. Identical with the one found by the body. Then you knew all the time. Every step of the way, Miss Myers. Chief, you're a regular marvel. Oh, Defender. Yes, Miss Myers. The governor's waiting on the line. Ah, of course. I'll take it. Hello? Yes, Your Excellency. What? What? I'll be right over. What's up, Chief? Warm up the car, Egan. Yes, Chief. My hat, Miss Myers. Another case, Defender? Yes, another case. And I'm going to call this one the case of the last defense. Tune in again next week for another thrilling adventure with Marvin Moody, Defender of Justice. And meantime, be sure to stop in at your corner drugstore and stock up with Reet, the cooler cola that can't be beat. Remember, it's cool, it's sweet. It's all right. This program has come to you from Hollywood. Okay, folks, that's the show. Thanks much. Oh, the pleasure was all yours. Where are we getting these scripts, Marvin? Well, I think tonight's script was very good. Are you kidding? It was a crawler. Even last week's wasn't this silly. Mm, the agency was very happy with last week's show. That's not the way I got it. Well, then you got it wrong, Alice. If you all must know, I wrote this script, and I wrote the one last week, too. And when we go to TV, I'm going to have even more control of the writing. Oh, Marv, look, you got your hands full enough just being the defender of justice. What's the matter with Billy Jackson? He gave you some fine scripts. Mm, Billy is not with us anymore. You mean he quit? He was let go. The fog is beginning to lift. He'd begun to think he was indispensable. I got news for you, Marv. He was. And I've got news for you, Harry. Neither he nor anyone else connected with Defender of Justice is indispensable. We're going into TV, and we're going in big. I don't want anyone along who's going to be unhappy or try to rock the boat. Do you get the message? I got you. Alice? After 15 years of being Miss Myers, I would hardly start standing up for my rights at this stage of the game. Chief. <laughs> hey, well, you know, uh, don't mind a little innocent kidding, Alice. After all, we've been together a long time. How true. So I, 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 I just want you to know that um, whatever happens isn't personal. And it's all for the good of the show. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Nothing definite. Nothing definite at all. You, Ma? Mm hmm. I'm out in the kitchen. Want a sandwich? No, thanks, honey. We had a bite after the show. You and Bob? No, Harry Regan. I'll have a glass of milk. Sure. He's been calling you. Bob has? A couple of times. 
You want to break down and marry the guy, Mom? The milk, please. It's not every day you get proposed to by a vice president in charge of REIT. Would you really like Bob Rayburn for a stepfather? Oh, I think he's a great guy. He is. Also, he's loaded. Pete. Well, isn't he? Well, that hasn't anything to do with it. We've managed very nicely. Us and the defender of justice. Oh, front door. Oh, I'll go, honey. You finish the sandwich. If that's Rocky, tell him I'll be right with him. All right. Good evening, Alice. Bob, come in, come in. He was just saying you'd call. Yeah, yeah, I thought about calling it with rehearsal, and then uh, I decided I'd rather talk to you alone about this. Very mysterious. Sit down. Thanks. Is anything wrong? I think so, or rather, I think you'll think so. It's about the show. It's uh, it's going to go TV. I know that. No, I don't mean for next fall. It's going on live as a summer replacement for the Morton show. This summer? They start a week from Wednesday. Radio show's been canceled. But such a rush. It's nonsense. Well, J.B. doesn't think so, and he's the sponsor. Well, when do we get a script if we're going to do the show in eight days? Uh, that's what I uh, came to tell you about. You won't be doing the show. What do you mean? Well, it, it's Moody. You know, he owns the property. He sold J.B., and... I'm just saying what he said. Well, say it, Bob. What is it? Well, he thinks you're wrong to play Miss Myers on television. Wrong? I am Miss Myers. I know it. I've been playing her for 15 years. Yeah, well, that's Moody's point. What do you mean? He says you're too old. Too old? Well, he says the public imagines you as a girl in her early 20s. Well, perhaps they do. Well, he sold the old man that that's how Miss Myers should look on television. Hi, Bob. Oh, hello, Pete. What's the funeral? Uh, it's, it's nothing, honey. She turn you down again, pal? Pete! Oh, just kidding. <laughs> oh, forget it. As a matter of fact, I was saving that offer until after the shock wore off. What shock? Moody wants another actress to do Miss Myers on television. How come? Well, he, he says I'm too old. That overblown meathead. When did this happen? Moody signed the contracts this afternoon. The show starts a week from Wednesday. So that's what he was talking about. What? After the show, he made a few oblique threats... To you? Oh, nothing definite. In fact, those were his words. Nothing definite at all. The usual speech about none of us being indispensable and whatever he did was for the good of the show, you know. That lardhead. And all the time he was sharpening the axe. I sure wish I could suggest something, Alice. <sighs> There's nothing to suggest. If I'm out, I'm out, and that's that. If everyone's so unindispensable, I'd like to know how Moody stays on. Well, that's a little different. His is the unmistakable voice of the defender. Well, he may be the voice, but he's not the picture. Phony, fat, and 50. Hey, 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 easy, pal. That, that <laughs> shoe's beginning to fit. Uh, you know what I mean, yeah. Bob. He's such a fake. I know, Pete, I know. But your mother's got the answer. Moody is the voice of the defender, known to millions. Well, you got to start from there. Well, isn't Mom the voice of Miss Myers? Sure, Well, then but... what's the difference? Her voice is as well-known as his, isn't it? You know, Pete may have something, Bob. Yeah, now, wait, wait. That may be an arguing point, but let's see how we can use it. Well, is he keeping Harry on as Regan? Yeah, as far as I know. Well, then there it is. The public won't be fooled for a minute. Miss Myers will be the only new voice. And it'll stand out like a sore thumb. Now, I think, I, I just think we may have an angle here. <laughs> J.B. feels very strongly about character identification. Mm -hmm. That's what surprised me most. I don't know how Moody put it through with him. Oh, that's Rocky. I'll get it. You going out? Just down the movie. Be right with you, Rock. Will I be needed for the rest of this conference? No, you go ahead, but don't be too late, son. I won't. You want me to bring home some ice cream? Swell. Have fun. So long, Bob. Smash that sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do the best I can. Oh, you know, Alice, there's one of the few human beings under 21 that I've ever genuinely liked. Does it remind you of Jim? Yeah, an awful lot. Maybe that's the answer. Yeah, maybe. And again, it reminds me of you, which might also be the answer. You're very sweet. They don't come any sweeter, and remember, folks, this offer is limited. Really? <laughs> no, no, not really. Hey, what about it, honey? Bob. Look, I don't think I'm kidding myself. I love you, and I understand it's mutual. You know it is. I don't expect to take Jim's place. I, I wouldn't want even... That to... isn't it, Bob. I've been a widow for a long time, and it's not a case of taking anyone's place. Well, then what is it a case of? This thing's been on dead center now for almost a year. Well, it was Pete to begin with. I told you about that. You can't just toss a new father to boy and expect him to do handsprings about Pete it. Pete and I hit it off right away. I just wanted to be sure. All right, so now you're sure. I've been sure for a lot longer than now. It's... Oh, well, you probably won't believe this, but it's true. I, I, I decided to, to say yes, as you must know I've wanted to for a long time. Oh, Alice. Let me finish. I, I decided to a few days ago. I even put it up to Pete again before you came in tonight to be sure how he felt. Yeah, and what did he say? He said you were a great guy. <laughs> Love that Pete. 
He also reminded me that you were loaded. Oh, well, I am. It's, uh, that's one of my finer points. <laughs> that's the trouble just at the moment. Oh, Alice, you're not going to give me that you're rich and I'm poor. Of course not, but if I married you right now, it could look very cold and calculating and messy. Well, what are you talking about? Bob, I've just been fired. I'm unemployed. Oh, now, come on. I have. I'm out of work. So what do I do? Bounce into the arms of the nearest account executive? Alice, let's not get silly about well, this. Well, how else do you think it'll look? How would it look to you? How would what look to me? I haven't made any secret of how I feel about you. But I have, or at least I haven't broadcast it because of Pete. Well, so what? So all of a sudden I'm off the show and the next thing everyone hears, you and I are going to be married. It'll look like I was desperate and I hooked you for a meal ticket. Oh. It will, Bob. Well, I, I, I don't care how it looks. Of course you do, and you should. I don't see why we can't leak it that you're quitting the show because we're getting married. Because that isn't how it would leak, not with Big Mouth Moody at large. Yeah. Well, at least you're not fired yet. At least, not officially. You think Pete's idea about my voice... No, I think it's worth trying. Uh, That's all, I think. If they aren't changing the others... It's a good arguing point. Uh-huh. A very good one. Now, well, I should tell you this. I didn't put up much of a fight when I first heard that you were being replaced. You won't need to work anyhow. But, Bob, I enjoy working. I know, honey, and I knew it then. Just being selfish... Now the whole thing's turned around. You, you know yourself how bad it would look. Can you come down to the office at 10.30 tomorrow morning? I think so. Why? I'm going to set up a meeting for then with Moody and the old man. You, you think you can change their minds that quickly? I'm going to have to. The show goes into rehearsal tomorrow afternoon. I hope you realize, J.B., that I have a million and one things to do before rehearsal. I I... know, Marv, and you'll get 100% cooperation from us. Then just what is such a burning issue that Rayburn can't wait until I... He didn't give me all the details, Marv, but it has something to do with replacing Alice. Oh, that's all been thrashed out. Not with me, it hasn't. J.B., I thought we had an understanding. We have a perfect understanding, Marvin. You're the defender of justice, and I'm the sponsor. You understand that, don't you? Yes, of course, J.B., but this borders on a, 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 a usurpation of my creative authority, and it clearly states in my contract I'm familiar that, with uh, the contract, Marvin. My lawyers prepared it, including the cancellation clause. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, come in. It's us, J.B. Good morning, Bob. Alice. Good morning, Mr. Rogers. Marv. Morning, Alice and Rayburn. Now, what's all this about? This is about your decision to replace Alice. Well, I'm sure she realizes that it's nothing personal. Oh, that's but... neither here nor there. It's the wisdom of the decision that I'm questioning. On what grounds? That Alice is indispensable to the show. No one is indispensable to the show. That I contest, and I think J.B. will agree with me. To begin with, you are indispensable. That's a nice bit of flattery, Rayburn. Oh, I but assure you, get... Moody, it's not flattery. It's fact. For all of your physical shortcomings, and let's face it, you're no matinee idol. Now, look here. I told you it wasn't flattery. For all of your shortcomings, you are the voice of the defender. And people will expect you to be the defender on television as you are on radio. And they'll accept you as you are because they want the real article. Uh, I think I'm a little ahead of you, Rayburn. You're going to tell me that the same situation will apply to Alice? Exactly. And I think J.B. will agree with me. Do you, J.B.? I must admit I'm leaning that way, Marv. You said yesterday you thought you could get around this problem. Yeah, I can, and I have. Uh, Alice. Yes? Can I be brutally frank? I don't think there's ever been much doubt of it. It's your voice, is it not, that our faithful audience will expect to hear from the lips of Miss Myers on uh, television? Yes. They have no knowledge of your appearance? No. So, if the voice is the same... We've solved the problem, have we not, J.B.? Well, I would certainly think so. Precisely. Now, would you all be good enough to accompany me to the studio? There's someone over there I'd like you to meet. Uh, Miss Pearson. Yes, Miss Moody? Uh, Ellen, I'd like you to meet some friends of mine. I'd be glad to. This is our sponsor, Mr. Rogers. Pleasure, Miss Pearson. Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rayburn, our account executive. How do you do? Mr. Rayburn. And finally, Alice Stanley. How do you do? So you're Alice Stanley. It's like meeting a long-lost friend. It is? Oh, yes, and I must say you're just as I pictured you. (laughs) Why, thank you. Ellen has made a very close study of you, Alice. A very close study. She has? Indeed, she has. Ellen... Would you step over there to that microphone while we go into the control booth? Yes, of course. Would you uh, follow me, please? Marv, what's this all about? You'll all see shortly. 
What do you think of her? Miss Pearson, she's a knockout. What? She's going to be our Miss Myers. That? That kid? She's the one. Well, now, look here, Marv. The girl's not the Miss Myers type. You mean she's not the voice type, don't you? The character of Miss Myers doesn't exist except as a voice. Well, that's true, but this girl doesn't sound the least bit like Alice. Now, wait and see. Uh, hand me that talk back, will you, Raymond? Oh, sure, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Ellen, uh, Miss Pearson. Yes, Mr. Moody? Uh, stand by the mic for a moment. I want you to recite something for these people. All right. Uh, Alice, mm -hmm. uh, speak into the talk back here and say, my name is Alice Stanley, and I have been playing the role of Miss Myers on the Defender of Justice show for 15 years. What? Let's go ahead and say it. I want to give J.B. something for a basis of comparison. Well, mm. as you wish. My name is Alice Stanley, and I have been playing the role of Miss Myers on the Defender of Justice show for 15 years. Uh, did you hear that, Ellen? Yes. Hi, Moody. What is uh, you, You'll see in a moment. And uh, now, uh, Ellen, do you think you could repeat that back to us? Word for word? Yes, yes. And do it as Miss Myers would. Okay. <clears throat> My name is Alice Stanley, and I have been playing the role of Miss Myers on the Defender of Justice show for 15 years. Was that all right? Yes, 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 it was perfect. Well, gentlemen, I wouldn't believe it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. Quite a remarkable imitation, don't you think, Alice? Remarkable. Uh, does this resolve any doubts you have, Rayburn? Well, I, I, I don't think she can keep it up week after week. No, I don't intend that she shall. As the television audience becomes gradually accustomed to Ellen, you see, in the role of Miss Myers, we will drop her imitation of Alice altogether. Very resourceful indeed. Uh, nothing personal, you understand, Alice. I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, it's for the good of the show. Yes, Petey? Did I wake you? No, I was just resting. Is the show over? Yep, just finished. I still got the headache. Oh, a little better. Just took a couple of aspirin. How'd you like it? The show? Yeah. Moody went up on his lines twice. Oh? Lost. Didn't even know what channel he was on. How did the girl look? Like his granddaughter. Oh, don't work so hard at being loyal, honey. I mean, how did she sound? How did she act? You watch the rehearsals. She sounded like you, and she acted like a chorus girl. Well, you got anything against chorus girls? Not in the chorus. <sighs> well, I think I'll get up and have a cup of coffee. You expecting anyone? No, I'll get it. Oh, hi, Bob. Pete, uh, how's everything? Good. Come in, come in. Uh, how you doing, honey? Pretty good, Bob. Mm. I thought you'd be at the show. No, I left after the dress rehearsal. How'd you like it? Uh, I, I didn't watch it. Pete said it looked fine. Oh, but Moody. And how did he look? Like Moody. Hmm. Well, the old man seemed satisfied, or at least not dissatisfied. I was just going to make some coffee. Have a cup. Sure. Petey? You folks go ahead. I told Rocky I'd drop over after dinner. Well, don't be out too late, honey. Uh, tell her I'm a big boy now, huh? Huh? <laughs> well, after all, Mother, he is growing like a weed. And I'll cut him down like same, and you too. Oh, rough, rough. <laughs> go on. Get out of here. <laughs> so long, Pete. Hey, that feels good. You know, to have him call me Pop. I mean, even kidding. Bob. Now, look, before you say anything... I wasn't going to say anything. I haven't already said All it. right, Alice, then listen to me. We've for... been through it five times in the last five days. No, Bob. I'm not going to do something that will make you look like a fool and me a scheming woman. Alice, be sensible. I'm being sensible. Oh, some grand position this is. Oh, don't talk nonsense. I'm not talking nonsense. You are. I love you, Bob, very deeply and honestly. Sure. I do. But it's my son who's 17, not me. I've had the moonlight. I've had the roses. Who's talking about that? You are. We're not kids anymore. We can't strike out for new friends, new frontiers. I'm not suggesting we should. Then why won't you face the fact that the people we know and the world we have to live in will treat you very cruelly if I suddenly blossom forth in the next few weeks as Bob Rayburn's unemployed bride? Oh, I think you're absolutely crazy. I don't care what you think. Yes, and I'm beginning to believe that. Oh, Bob, listen. No, no, I've listened long enough, and I think I've waited long enough. Because if you're more concerned with what a, a, a lot of 15-cent phonies like Moody and that gang think of you... And of you, of you... Okay, then you stay noble. 
and single. Oh, won't you even try to understand? I think I do. I, I, I think I understand perfectly, Alice. Bob! You got off the hook very smoothly. Oh. Goodbye. <laughs> Morning, Miss Atkins. Oh, Miss Stanley, I thought you'd never get here. What's all the excitement? Well, didn't J.B., I mean, Mr. Rogers tell you over the phone? Well, no, he was very brief. They started pouring in less than an hour after the show last night. What started pouring in? The telegrams and phone calls. Oh, excuse me. Yes, Mr. Rogers. Will you call Miss Stanley's home and see if she's left yet, Miss Atkins? She just came in the office. Well, send her in here, woman. Send her in here. Yes, sir, right away. They're waiting for you, Miss Stanley. Who? A.B., Moody, and Mr. Rayburn. Mr. Rayburn? They've been in conference since 8.30. Please, Miss Stanley, if you don't go right in, J.B. will chew my head off. All right, all right. Thanks much. Alice, come in, come in. J.B., I don't think we should lose our heads over this. Good morning, Alice. Bob? You worry about your own head, Marvin. Mine's on securely. Alice, sit down, sit down. Now, you can't judge the whole picture from a few telegrams. What's going on? You mean a few hundred? You'll see. Furthermore, I have my suspicions about this spontaneous reaction to last night's show. I never heard of such a thing happening. Well, you've heard of it now. Just look at them. Wires, phone messages from all over the country. How much proof do you want? Mr. Rogers. Alice, it's been fantastic. You won't believe it. I won't believe what? The following you have, the loyal fans. I knew it. I knew it in my heart. Even that Pearson girl remarked, you look just as she pictured you. Will somebody please explain well, the what... show got an immediate reaction, Alice. Everybody wanted to know why we didn't use the real Miss Myers on television. Just read some of these wires. Listen to this. I quote, Who ever told that old goat he could act? Oh, no, that one's about you, Marvin. Old <laughs> goat? Yes. Oh, yes, here we are. We have always imagined Miss Myers to be an attractive, intelligent woman, not a college girl. We'll swallow lots of reet. You see, they even use a product. But we can't swallow the new Miss Myers. Signed, Edna Wilson, Indianapolis, Indiana. And that's just a sad... They all say the same thing. Even our butlers and distributors wired complaints. That's what I don't like about this, J.B. That sounds like a campaign. An organized campaign And who designed... do you think organized Miss Wilson of Indianapolis, Indiana, or all those other hundreds of people around the country? I'm talking about your salespeople and the distributors. What about them? They aren't the people who buy your product. No, but they sell it. And when they're not happy with a sales gimmick, I scrap the gimmick. Well, that's different. I've got news for you, Moody. The defender of justice is a sales gimmick. Mm, In a broad sense, yes. In the narrowest sense possible. I'm not paying $14,000 a week to listen to you huff and puff. Now, just a minute, J.B. I want people to drink or eat. Oh, as do I, J.B., as do I. Well, they won't drink it if they're all upset about who's playing Miss Meyer. But that will pass, J.B. It will not. They'll get fed up with looking at a phony show, and they'll turn to another channel. And the next thing you know, they'll be drinking Root. Root? Our competitors drink. Now, don't act like you never heard of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard of it, yeah. Then it's all settled. Alice? Yes, Mr. Rogers? You start next week as the real Miss Myers on television. Oh, do, do you really mean it? I do. And Mr. Moody is perfectly agreeable, aren't you, Marvin? <clears throat> Uh, absolutely, Jamie. Miss Atkins has probably finished typing up the contracts. Would you mind signing them on your way out, Alice? <laughs> I'd, I'd be delighted. Alice, would, would you be half as delighted to have lunch with me? I'd love to, Bob. Oh, oh I- I'll join you. You will uh, not. I want to talk to you, Marvin. Uh, won't it keep J.B.? No. Do you have a reducing machine? Uh, a reducing machine? Would you excuse us, J.B.? Oh, yes, by all means, by all means. Now, what would I want with a reducing machine? I feel you're a bit paunchy for a defender of justice. Now, J.B., I'm nothing but skin and bone. Be that as it may, you've got too much skin. <laughs> oh, I've got a feeling the defender of justice is in for a bad half hour. Oh, Bob. <laughs> Well, then, how does it feel to be employed again? I don't care about that. I was hoping that's what you'd say. When I think how angry you were last night... Oh, I wasn't so angry. I know. What do you mean, you know? I know why all those wires from the distributors and bottlers came in. You you contacted them, didn't you? Well, why not? J.B. wanted their reaction. I didn't load the question. I just asked them what they thought of the new Miss Myers. You faker. No, there wasn't anything fake about it. If they liked her, they'd have said so. I wonder. Well, you don't have to wonder about the the wire we got from Miss Wilson in Indianapolis. I couldn't drum that up. What did you do? Phone each one of the distributors? It was on my own bill. The firm didn't get hooked for it. Oh, Bob, it must have cost you a fortune. And what of it? As my future stepson says, I'm loaded. But that was no reason, dear. Uh Uh-uh. The best reason you can have in this business. What do you mean? It was for the 
good of the show. This is Desi Arnaz again. You know, a friend of mine went to a meeting the other night at which the topic was atomic defense. I suppose a great many of these meetings are being held right now all over the world, and many perhaps right at this very moment. We started talking about what happened in the meeting, and he told me, uh, you know, cities are always boasting about how self-sufficient they are until they have to prepare for some emergency. It's only then that they seem to realize how dependent they are upon outside help. In fact, it's only when you survey conditions that you realize how dependent everyone is upon things that were placed in the earth, on the earth, and around the earth long before man came. I mean such things as air, water, wood, fuel, minerals. We are so accustomed to summoning electricity out of a switch and water out of a faucet that we never really think of these things. Well, my friend's words gave me plenty to think about. And out of that thinking comes this conclusion. Man has to look outside himself too, not only for the things placed on the earth long before he came, but for someone who existed long before he did. Someone whom even the heavens cannot contain, God. And how do we call for his help? Through prayer. But prayer is not to be only thought of in terms of disaster, for it's both a preparatory and a preventive measure. In fact, a mighty good course of daily action. Now, family theater again reminds you the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, the Mutual Broadcasting System has brought you transcribed Summer Replacement starring Una Merkel. Daisy Arnaz was your host. Others in our cast were Gene Bates, John Daner, Lawrence Dobkin, Marvin Miller, Howard Culver, and Jeffrey Silver. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type program, by the Mule Network, which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them... And to you, our humble thanks. This is George Crowell expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when Family Theater will present The Coat starring Gene Evans. Irene Dunn will be your hostess. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. Mm -hmm.